Welcome to the Workflows and Templates Lab Overview. In the Workflows and Templates Lab, you'll use workflows to create device templates and devices. Then you'll deploy a device in the SD-WAN. Throughout the remaining labs, you may want to reuse the same device and just change the template and configuration used on the device. Or you can clean up the environment after each lab and follow the redeployment process each time. Start the lab by logging into VersaDirector with the standard username and password. Once in VersaDirector, you should be in the Administration Appliances dashboard. There are two devices already deployed in the network, a controller and a hub device. New templates are created using a workflow. Navigate to the Workflows dashboard and select Template, Templates from the left side menu. A template created from a workflow inherits the same name as the workflow. The parameters in the lab guide can be used for the workflow, template, and device names, but once you become more familiar with the process, feel free to use your own naming convention. In the lab, you'll create a template within the Tenant1 organization. It will have a single controller assigned and a subscription setting. The subscription setting isn't critical as it only affects licensing and not functionality of the end device once the template is applied to a device. Be sure to assign the analytics cluster that will be used by devices that use this template. The interface assignment will include two WAN interfaces and a LAN interface. Make sure that the first WAN interface is assigned to the MPLS network and the second WAN interface is assigned to the INET network, which is also shown on the lab diagram. Both WAN interfaces will receive static interface addresses. Provide a network name for the LAN and select the organization to which the LAN belongs, which is the Tenant1 organization. The other fields should populate automatically. In the Services tab, be sure to enable Next Generation Firewall Services. If this step is skipped, the devices that use this template won't have access to the NGFW configuration parameters. The button to create the template is located in the Final tab, so even though you aren't configuring any management server information, Navigate to the Management Servers tab to create the workflow, and by doing so, it will create a device template. Once the template is created, you need to create a device that will use the template for configuration parameters. In the Workflows dashboard, devices are created under the Devices section. There are three main tabs in the Add Device dialog. The first provides basic device information such as a device name, global ID, organization, and serial number. Use the values in the lab guide for these parameters. The device group links the device to a template. If a device group isn't already created to link your device to the template that you just created, click the plus device group link and create a new device group. The device group requires a name and a link to a post staging template. Remember to point the device group to the template you created, then click OK. Assign a subscription level to the device and continue to the location tab. The location tab requires at least a country code. Click the Get Coordinates button to retrieve the coordinates of the location you enter. The Bind Data tab allows you to enter the device-specific information. Since the template was configured to use a static IP address for each device, the IP addresses for the devices that use the template must be entered before the device-specific configuration can be built. If you click on the Bind Data tab, and there isn't a table for entering the bind data, Usually that means that the post staging template wasn't configured properly in the device group. You can enter the bind data directly in the table or click on the serial number of the device to open a pop-up form window for the data. Enter the IP address information located in the lab guide, then click OK. Once you're finished, a device template and a device will be created in the system, but the device still hasn't been provisioned. Open an SSH session to your device and run the staging script as specified in the lab guide. This will place a temporary configuration on the device which allows it to authenticate to the controller and build a secure IPsec tunnel to the controller. If a configuration already exists on the device from a previous lab, enter the CLI and issue the request erase running config command to reset the device configuration, then exit the CLI and rerun the script. You can use the up arrow to recall previous scripts. Be sure that you have the right serial number in the script. The controller will now notify VersaDirector that your device, with the serial number you entered in the script, has authenticated to the network and requested a configuration. You can check to make sure the authentication to the controller is successful by entering the CLI and issuing the Show Interfaces Brief Pipe Tab command. 
If the TVI interface associated with the management routing instance is in the up, up state, the tunnel was successfully built. If the interface is in the admin down state, there is a possibility that the authentication credentials you entered in the script are incorrect and the tunnel was not built. VersaDirector will build the device configuration and copy the configuration to the device using netconf. Then the director will issue a reboot command to the device, also through netconf, and the device will reboot with the production configuration. The status of the device in the hardware inventory will change from shipped to claimed. There's a chance that at some point in the lab the provisioning fails. This is a scenario that is sometimes seen in the lab environment because devices that have the same name are reprovisioned over and over again, which can cause a caching conflict in the VersaDirector database. If this occurs, you can get around this error by recreating the device with a slightly different name. To demonstrate this, I'll recreate the device with a different name. I'll also use a different serial number just so I can leave the original device that didn't deploy properly in the system for an example. Once the new device with a unique name and serial number is deployed, you can redo the deployment process on the device. The new name in VersaDirector should prevent the caching conflict and allow the device to be deployed.